Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we're going to be discussing two features to the Pokemon franchise that have mixed opinions from fans. You have Mega Evolution, which when it was announced and revealed in Pokemon X and Y was incredibly popular, and to this day fans still beg Game Freak to put it back into the newer games. The other feature is Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing, a gimmick introduced in Pokemon Sword and Shield where the Pokemon grows in size and with G-Maxing actually takes on a new powered up form. Now I think there's a way for these two features to meet together and for Game Freak to merge them into one feature. I think it would solve a lot of the problems with Mega Evolution, and I think it would also help to bring back some of the designs of Mega Pokemon while also letting us still have the G-Max Pokemon designs and features as well. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. Now, if this sort of merger was ever to happen, there's going to be a lot of canon issues that are going to have to be sorted out or issues that Game Freak is going to have to kind of take and push to the side. Now, it's obvious to a lot of Pokemon fans that Game Freak doesn't necessarily completely care about what is canon and what is not, and they don't always care about trampling over ideas that they've pushed for in different games in previous games if it means improving the new game. We've seen this countless times with Oras introducing Megas into the Hoenn region, changed the story of Ruby and Sapphire, and in response, Game Freak pretty much created alternate universes, alternate timelines for the Pokemon world. And I think you need to move away from the canon issues and actually solve the problem of Megas and G-Maxes. Now, the thing that both of these have in common is that they're new forms for final evolutions of Pokemon. And a lot of the mega forms that were introduced in Generation 6 are incredibly popular designs. The two Mega Charizards, Mega Blaziken, Mega Lucario, the Mega Hoenn starters, they're all incredibly popular. And they're designs, and it's a feature that I think worked very well within the world of Pokemon, while also working really well as a gameplay mechanic. Personally, one of the reasons why I felt Mega Evolution was such an interesting topic is that it was very... The dex entries for Mega Evolution and what it meant for trainers, it conflicted a little bit. In the games and in the show, it's often portrayed that Mega Evolution is able to be achieved when the bond between the trainer and the Pokemon reaches its peak. Yet in a lot of Pokedex entries for some of these Mega Evolutions, we saw that it actually inflicts a lot of pain and a lot of angst onto these Pokemon. It's an interesting dichotomy that I think is far more complex than any gimmick feature should be in a generation. And it's really cool that Game Freak was able to push it that far and give players these little bits of dialogue which really expanded on the lore of the concept. Of course, once we got into the Alola games, we moved away from Megas, even though you were still able to use them, and we got Z-moves. Now, some people have gone a step further and said, let's combine all three of these gimmicks, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Z-moves are a very, very separate type of feature. They're still a power-up, but it's a power-up of a move, and I think it fits well within the Alola region specifically. I wouldn't necessarily want to see Z-moves in a region or in a game outside of one that takes place in Alola, because I think that overall, the concept fits incredibly well, and I think it should stay there. But with Megas and G-Max, I think there's enough similarities to the two where moving forward, I think it would be in the best interest of the franchise to merge them together. Now, Dynamax is still something that works for every single Pokemon. That doesn't affect G-Maxes, that doesn't affect, affect Mega Evolution. But one of the problems with Mega Evolution specifically, and something that I think probably went into Game Freak's thinking here is, whenever you design a new Mega Evolution, you had to give it a stone. A specific Mega Stone for that Pokemon to give it to hold so you could trigger Mega Evolution. And for every single game that they, they made, you had to program every single one of these Mega Stone items into the overworld, or you had to put them in a shop and basically buy them. If you merge these two concepts and turn Megas into G-Max forms, which is what I would do, then I think you can do away with the need for stones entirely. It can be an ability of the Pokemon, and you can make it so, as this was a feature, that the Pokemon, when it G-Maxes, doesn't have access to its held item, or something to get through that, that barrier where a Pokemon held their Mega Stone. They didn't have another item to also give them a power boost. Now, some people might say this is going to change the competitive meta, and I agree with you, but I'm not a competitive player. This is solely for the purpose of enjoyment of this franchise for me, and I think in terms of enjoying the story and the world building of Pokemon, 
I think bringing back the concept of Megas and the concept of G-Max, two features that I very much enjoy in the games themselves, I think it would go a long way to really kind of getting all the fans on board. Now, the other thing you're going to have to address, and it's kind of the big elephant in the room, is that there are some G-Max Pokemon that also have Mega Evolutions, namely everybody's favorite dragon that is not a dragon, Charizard. Charizard has two Mega Evolutions, Charizard X, uh, Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y. Charizard also has a G-Max. That creates some complications. Now, off the top of my head right now, I'm not sure if there are any other Pokemon that are the same way, but let's focus on solving Charizard for a moment. If it was up to me, if I was the designer, I would simply take X and Y Megas, and I would still do the same thing with them. I would make one exclusive to one version of the game, and I would make the other exclusive to the other version of the game. What I would then do is I would take Gigantamax Charizard as a base, and I would redesign the Pokemon. So, let's use Sword and Shield as an example. I would take Mega Charizard X for Sword, and then incorporate the design of Mega Charizard X into the G-Max Charizard design. If I was using Shield, I would take G-Max Charizard and incorporate some of Mega Charizard Y into the G-Max Charizard. I think that's how you can sort of retcon this this bit of an issue and also move forward in a way where Charizard doesn't get three special forms to G-Max into. It gets one, it gets two technically, but they're split between two different games. I think that's the best way that you can remedy these problems. And I think those are honestly the two biggest barriers here. One are the stones, which I think you can get a, move away from, and I think you should. And the other is the designs overlapping each other. It would also give Game Freak a chance to design more powered up Pokemon without having to give them specific items and then program those items into games. It would also allow them to keep the raid feature. We all know, as I mentioned in my previous video, that I think the Sinnoh remakes that are probably coming this year, fingers crossed, or else these videos look really bad, are going to have Dynamax and Gigantamax. Now, this theory kind of also works on the idea that this is not just a Gen 8 gimmick, and it might be. This is where we run into problems with Game Freak and what they do. This is a theory video, this is a speculation video. I think you can keep both of these features as franchise features for Pokemon. It's just a question of whether or not Game Freak is going to do that. And they've been known now for the last couple generations to introduce features and drop them. We even saw this as far back as Gen 4 and Gen 5. In the Heart Gold and Soul Silver remakes, Pokemon could follow you. We didn't get that back until Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which are sort of side games. We saw rotation battles and triple battles in Gen 5. And while those battles still did exist in future games, they weren't pushed. They were barely pushed in Gen 5, even though it was a very interesting concept. Game Freak likes to introduce concepts for one gen and move forward. This theory doesn't really hold up. This plan doesn't really hold up if Game Freak decides to just ditch raid battles and big Pokemon, which are Dynamax and G-Maxes, moving forward. I think they should keep them. I think raids are a great feature in Pokemon. I think it's a feature that expands the multiplayer aspect of the game and gives the game more life and longevity. I think it gives players something to do in these open world locations. And I think it's a great social feature. It's also great with shiny hunting. G-Max Adventures or Dynamax Adventures in the Crown Tundra give you access to legendaries. It's a great way to give legendaries to players without pushing them into their faces and it gives them a fun shiny hunting gimmick, which is something that Game Freak really for a long time ignored, which was shiny hunting and shinies entirely, and they've now embraced in a much larger way. So I think you can marry a lot of these questions, and I think there's a lot more that I would love to hear from you guys. Should they merge Megas and Dynamaxing? Should these features stay moving forwards? The biggest reason for me why I want them to remain is that I miss a lot of these old designs. Mega Swampert is a fantastic Mega Evolution design. Mega Metagross is gorgeous and it's a great take on Metagross's final form originally. And these designs are kind of lost to time now. We don't see them in the new games. The only time that I think we might see them in the future is when I'm incredibly old and we get X and Y remakes is when we'll see Mega Evolution again if the timeline is to continue as it is. And I don't want that. I don't want to have to wait and I don't want features to be features that are very impactful for, to the franchise to be buried in specific regions. 
We already know that Pokemon wants to use these as tools to advertise their, their franchise. Mega Evolutions in Pokemon Go. Mega Evolution, I believe, is in Pokemon Masters. So there are spin-off games that are utilizing these features while the main games aren't. And I think there's a way to fix it and there's a way to consolidate these features so it's not seen as pressing on the player. With that being said, I want to know what you guys think. Do you like Megas? Do you want to see them return? I know a lot of people don't like Dynamax. Would you be okay if these features were merged together so we could have what I think you could eventually get to, which is the best of both worlds? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It always helps the channel grow. We've been seeing amazing support recently, and I want to thank you guys for that. And hopefully we can just keep it going. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.